Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I have one thing to say. Cobra. Stallone is a disease. Acting lessons are the cure. Thank you. Thank you. Has anybody flown anywhere recently? We had a man I know from Indianapolis who came up on uh, People's Express, was it? And uh, did you notice that security is as much stranger now than it was a couple of months ago? Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, now to pay for the uh, upgraded security measures at airports, uh, some airlines are actually charging passengers $5 extra per flight, uh, $10 extra if you want the strip search. <laughs> But you know, um, boy, we had some strange uh, people in the audience last night. I don't know, speaking of security, I don't know how they get in here. In the middle of the show, remember this, Paul? Yeah. A guy stands up about uh, two-thirds of the way up the audience and tries to adjust the color. Whoo! <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, Paul, from where I stand, the view just gets better and better. <laughs> It's just some nights, ladies and gentlemen, it's unbelievable here. Do, do yourselves a favor, get yourself a show like this, invite two or three hundred people in, put them in bleachers and just stand there and look at them for a while. And... Uh, you know, I'm going to the ball game tomorrow night, Paul. What did you say? I said, <laughs> I said, I'm going to the ball game tomorrow the, night. Uh, the big game, the, uh, the Mets uh, versus the Dodgers? That's right. Okay. right. <laughs> uh, they're playing out at Shea Stadium. It is the Mets and the Dodgers, and uh, it's their fourth annual uh, Athletes Against Hunger Night. And uh, fan no, no, this is, this is the truth, and fans are encouraged to bring non-perishable canned goods uh, to the ballpark with them. Now, the food will be divided up among uh, several New York City shelters and Tommy Lasorda. So... <laughs> Take a look at this show. <laughs> we have on this program, uh, because we got so much response to the man's last visit three years ago, <laughs> we've invited him back here tonight with more new products, Mr. Bob McMath. <laughs> and of course, anytime you have Bob on a show, you're also going to have Hector Macho Camacho. And if that's not enough, and by gosh, don't you think it ought to be? <laughs> Rounding out our Cavalcado stars tonight, Judy Tenuta. Yeah. Now, ladies and gentlemen, they can feel at home our very own Mr. Paul Schaefer. Paul, say hello to the Thank you very much. Thank you. Dave. Yes, Paul. How is how is our on camera relationship? Is it all right? Is it our on camera relationship? Yeah, I'm not worried about our you know our our real relationship as friends off camera. Right. How is our on camera? Well, I think it's just fine. Is Paul. it all right? Are you getting at something? Well, no, I just I want to check occasionally. I just want to make sure everything's all right. Paul Schaefer, by the way, this week, ladies and gentlemen, the June second issue, nineteen eighty six, of New York Magazine, on page forty four. Look at this. This is unbelievable. It's like a nine page article. Now it's huge. About our our own Paul Schaefer. <laughs> There he is. Very nice article. And, it's a and very complimentary yeah, article. Yeah, very complimentary, and you and deserve... You were very complimentary to me in the article. Well, of course. I think Thank the world you. of you. Why Thank wouldn't you I be? Thank you very much. But congratulations on that. Thanks a lot. Uh, oh, you know, we got a great show coming up on NBC. It's June 10th uh, of this uh, year, 1986. It's called uh, American Almanac, and it's uh, from the news department with Connie Chung. Are you all right, Will? What's the matter? Make that noise again. Make the noise. Oh, jeez. <laughs> uh, do you want some antibiotics? <laughs> well, we had a little something upstairs, huh? No, I'm not, not holding. <laughs> I want to tell you about this uh, show coming up from the NBC News. And, of course, as you know, the president of NBC News is uh, Lawrence Grossman. And he put together this show. It's uh, called American Almanac 1986 with uh, Connie Chung and Gerald Ford. Huh? Roger Mudd and Gerald Ford. <laughs> And uh, it'll be on how many days? Gee, I wonder how many days away that is. Anybody have any? Oh, here it comes. It's the countdown. 1986 is the name of the show. There it is. Boy, this is lovely. Oh, there they are. There's... <laughs> That's 13 days. <laughs> they do uh, 
really nice work there. That's one of the promotion uh, pieces you'll be seeing uh, all nice across piece. the uh, the nice broadcast promo. day. Uh, oh, you know, I want I want to mention one other thing, and then we'll get on with the show. We're moving to a new studio. Is that right? When are we going? Third week in June. Now, will this affect the home viewers at all, our move to a new studio? We actually think it will improve the quality of these shows. <laughs> um, so it's a much bigger studio, and why are we going exactly? They're going to fix up the control room here in our here. own studio. Well, that'll be nice. And then we'll be up there about three weeks, you say? Oh, closer to two months. Okay, so we'll, we'll let you know. I don't even know why we... Uh, I guess I shouldn't have really brought that up. But anyway, we'll be moving studios. We're going from 6A to 8H. Okay. And the cost to you, the home viewer? Absolutely, Absolutely. nothing. <laughs> a lot of shows would try and charge you, slip in a little surtax there, but no. No. We're going to cover the expenses of this move, and I hope you appreciate it. Uh, well, tonight we're going to do one of our uh, very famous, uh, famous, I'm sorry, very favorite things to do on this program. It's a segment we call... Who asked for it? People in the studio audience stand up and they tell us what they would like to see on the show or anything in their personal or professional lives and we try to accommodate them. Music, Paul, for who asked for it? Who asked for it? I don't know. Best I could do. Big article and it goes Big through Big article, I know. Yeah. Well, I got carried away with all my yeah. PR and I didn't have time to. Okay, who asked for it? Do you understand this? People out of the studio audience, look, we have a man at the microphone already. Let's get right to it. How do you do, sir? What, I, what is your name, please? Uh, Kevin Wheeler. Kevin Weedler? Wheeler. Well, uh, Wheeler. Where are you from, Kevin? Uh, Paramus. Paramus, New Jersey. And right. what do you do for a living, Kevin? I'm a commercial artist. Commercial artist. Uh, you work in the city, do you? Uh, no, I have a studio in my home. Studio in your home. Are you married? Yes, I am. You have family? No, not yet. Ah, uh, well, okay. Um, all right, Kevin, uh, what's on your mind tonight? Uh, well, I've really enjoyed the movie, uh, The Slugger's Wife, on cable. Oh, yeah, yeah. But, uh, I'm afraid it's, it's, uh, not on today, so I wondered if you could show a clip from it. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You, you don't think The Slugger's Wife is on cable tonight? No, no it's not on tonight. That, that doesn't seem possible. Have you checked? Uh, do me a favor. Check the little cable guide again. Okay. This just doesn't seem possible that it wouldn't be on. Oh, oh yeah, it's on HBO at 8. I'm so oh, it's on Showtime at 9 and 11. I'm sorry. Oh, okay, mistake. all right. <laughs> See, it's on. The Slugger's Wife is on. Thank you. By, by the way, this little segment here is nothing like viewer mail, so... <laughs> Uh, yes, we have another gentleman. How do you do, sir? What can I do for you tonight? Uh, David, I work for the uh, city of New York. Uh-huh. Uh, and I have a feeling I'm going to be on television very soon. I just thought I'd like to come by and uh, see how I look on, on television. Okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's, uh, that's a pretty good idea. I tell you, this is something we can do pretty easily for you. Just take a look at the monitor, and we'll get a shot of you, and you can tell how you look on camera. <laughs> I think you can get an idea for yourself. See how that works there. Can you see my face, David? No, no, I, I can't see your face at all, sir. Thank you. That's okay. perfect. Okay, thank you very thank much. You. <laughs> it's, a city of, <laughs> it's a city official, Paul. He just dropped by to... Let's see how, see how he looks on camera. Yeah. Okay, uh, where am I? <laughs> yes, sir, what is your name, please? My name is uh, John Tuttle. John, where are you from, sir? <laughs> and, uh, well, Dave, I... I'm sorry, John, I said, where, where are you from? Where, what's your hometown, John? Oh, Secaucus. Secaucus, okay. New uh, what can I do for you tonight, John? Well, I've been, I've been asleep uh, for a while over there, and my, my, my watch stopped. Uh, can you tell me the time? Oh, sure, it's, uh, it's, it's about 5, just about 5.41. 541, yeah. And could you, could you tell me what day it is? It's, uh, it's Tuesday the 27th. 27th? Yeah. Of April. No, 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 no. Not April, May. May? May. <laughs> <laughs> it's May. May. Yeah. 27th. 27th of May. Ah, appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. So you see, Paul, a, a city official dropped by to see how he'd look on Just the, to see how he looked, yeah. yeah. All right, we have time, I think, here for uh, one, one or two more. Let's, uh, wait a minute, where am I? 
Oh, I, I've lost my cards. Where am I? Number four. Number four. Why, why do I have cards at all, come to think of it? This is all spontaneous. <laughs> Yes, sir. Uh, what can I do for you? What is your name, sir? Uh, Ron Kimball. Ron, nice to have you in town. Are you from out of town? No, I live in the city. Ah, uh, you work in town, too? Yeah, I'm an advance, investment counselor. Investment counselor. Yeah. What would be a good investment to get into these days in the hectic 80s? I think energy stocks are due for a comeback. Energy stocks are making a comeback. Okay. Do you have money in those yourself? No. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what can I do for you, sir? Well, I'm a little claustrophobic, and I'd like to see the show without all these other people being crowded in here. Uh, is there any way you could get rid of the rest of the audience? Well, get, get rid of the rest of the audience? Do you, do you know what you're asking? Is this something you really want me to do, get rid of the rest of the audience? Yeah, yeah. Okay, if this is really what you want, sure, we'll get rid of them. Well, that's great. Thanks very much. Okay, who's, who's next up there? Excuse me, sir? Sir? Yeah, right there. No, you're next. Go ahead. No, I'm not next. I just went. Yeah, I know, but you're, you're the only one up there. Oh. Oh, I get it. All right, bring everyone else back then. Okay, there you go. Now, now I, I hope... <laughs> I, uh, I hope you've learned a valuable lesson, sir. Yeah, right. Get bent, pal. I'm, I'm, so... <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it's a nice haircut, by the way. I enjoyed it. <laughs> Yes, ma'am. Uh, what is your name, please? Karen. Karen, where are you from? I'm from uh, Jersey City. Uh huh. So everyone tonight is uh, virtually from New Jersey, with the exception of Ron there. Uh, uh -huh. And what what can I do for you? Well, I'm a really big Michael Jackson fan. Oh yeah. And I yeah. hear he's got a, a new album coming That's out right. right away. So I wanted to know if you could give us a preview. You know, as a matter of fact, I think a couple of days ago, Paul, in the mail, we received an advance copy of the new Michael Jackson album, as as yet, by the way, untitled. And if we have it queued up, we can go ahead and play one uh, part of a one cut for you, ma'am, and uh, we'll take a listen now to the new Michael Jackson album. Here we go. Play that. I need you out it full of flavor and so tender. Not tasting like a leather boot or old crumple fender. We have the finest quality choice grade A. Come in when you're ordering meat today. I don't know. <laughs> thank you, thank you very much, ma'am. <laughs> A little, uh, a little commercial, but I'm sure it'll be a big hit. Okay. Let me see. Where are we now? Let me tell you once again who's on the show. Oh, I mentioned it. Bob McMath with new products. Always good. Right, Paul? Always a smash. Yeah. And uh, Hector Macho Camacho and a very funny young woman, Judy Tenuta. All this plus much more, and it'll begin right after you take a look at this, folks. Come on back. The opening segment, Who Asked For It, made me laugh so hard my sides ached. The jokes weren't so great, but one of the phony audience members, Sandy Frank, has a new haircut that makes him look gay. Gosh, that was funny. Then, Bob McMath joined Dave for an engaging look at some new products. Oh my, okay, here we go. My first guest tonight was uh, with us a few years ago, and, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, he was so good then we decided to wait about five years and bring him back. No, no. Uh, he showed us at that time some of the most awful food products and ridiculous items ever forced down the throats of the American public. Uh, as a matter of fact, he has a collection of over 75,000 of these items, and here with some more, please say hello to Mr. Bob McMath. Bob, come on out here and, uh, I don't know, whatever you want. Hi, Bob. Nice to see you. Good, how are you? Fine, thank you. Okay, we have, uh... Bob, I tell you what, why don't you uh, very briefly, very succinctly explain to the folks just what it is you do, and then we'll, we'll look yes, at these... We tried that last month. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay, tell us about okay, it. Okay, basically, we keep track of new products going into testing. Who, who are we? 
a company called Marketing Intelligence Service. Is this a big, huge corporate? Well, it's not a big, huge corporate, but is it's it a nice global but conglomerate? It's a worldwide operation. Worldwide yes. operation, and yes. you're, you're monitoring on behalf of the consumer? Uh, no, we're monitoring on behalf of uh, manufacturers, other uh -huh. uh, competitors. Uh, who, who, keep track of who, of what one company's doing so we can tell the other it's company. It's a clearinghouse? Yes. Okay. Oh, that's a good way to Well, who, who's it. monitoring on behalf of the consumers? Uh, I'll do that. Don't yes, worry about it. Yes, you can do that one. Um, Okay, we have an array here of new items. Let's get yes. right to it. Now, well, these look pretty much just like standard paper napkins, Bob. Yes. I guess... Uh... Well, that's just in case you spill. Oh, this is, well, this is one of the new items, then, isn't yes. it? Oh, okay. We'll start off... What, is, what did I tell you about this guy, it'll, huh? It'll take, uh, it'll take a couple of minutes here, so we try... What we, is this? Now, first of all... This is a new product in England called a hot can. A hot can. Can we see that? Okay, a hot can. Right. Self Self-heating meals. Yes. And this is a chicken casserole. Yes. Now let's see if we can make well, it heat. Well, what kind of chemicals can be in a chicken casserole that makes it heat itself? Well, it's in the can. <laughs> it's in the can. It's in the can. The can will heat. It's supposed to. And how hot will it get? Did you uh, hot enough to eat. Did you activate this yet? No. Okay, that's what ahead, I'm about to do. Go ahead and activate. Okay, we'll activate. Mm -hmm. We'll punch. That's how that whole mess at Chernobyl started, I think, isn't it? <laughs> I told you that's what the paper napkins are for. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Then and, it, we have to wait about 10 minutes and, and see what And happens. it'll actually, uh, how hot do you suppose? You don't know. I don't know. I've okay. never had one heat on me. Let me have the paper napkin. <laughs> there you go. There you That's go, right. Bob. I just want to get off. Where, where is your office, Bob? Upstate New York, about 40 miles south of Rochester, a place called Naples, New York. Naples, New York. All right. Yes. Okay. So we'll wait for the chicken stuff to heat up. Yeah, Let's move on to, we'll take the top to, the, the, to the next item. Let's go on okay, to that next well, item. Okay. Here is an earlier product. All of these are brand new, aren't they? No. No, no. 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 <laughs> Some I'm of trying, these are I'm trying new... to get a handle on just what it is we have well, here. This is some of the 75,000 uh, in our new product supermarket, okay. which go back over uh, about 20 years now, almost 20 years. Oh. This is arm in arm. This is baking soda and a deodorant. Mm -hmm. Very excellent. I mean, can we spray a little of that? Yes, we can try. There it goes. It works this year. So it's aerosol uh, baking soda? Yes. Uh huh. Wow. <laughs> They're putting it back in toothpaste. I've too. never seen anything like this, Bob. <laughs> But is it an aerosol can? Is that what you say? Yes, but they're putting it back in toothpaste now. That's they're unbelievable. Put baking soda is amazing. Hey, Paul, product. did you see this? <laughs> aerosol can it? with baking soda in it. That's amazing. Okay, Bob. <laughs> now, how hot does this stuff get? <laughs> oh, right. Let's see if this is getting oh, hot. Okay, let's, let's move let's, right on, Bob, because we, we want to get... No, not yet. You're going to well, run no, it. No, 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 no. It has to. You have to take the top off. Just get... Whoops, there it goes. <laughs> so much for that one. I had a boy, so you screwed this up completely. <laughs> yes. <didn't you>? yes. <laughs> So now all you really need is a straw. Yes. Okay. 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 Now, how okay. much time Here. do we have? One minute, and we want to Here, cover all of these amazing products. In one minute? That's good. Well, no, 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 no. We'll do a commercial, okay. well, and then we'll right. This back. happens to be a new product in Japan. It mm -hmm. is the Rage. It's a confectionery product. It's chocolate-covered pickled scallions. <laughs> okay. Now, can we try these? Yes, Should we open try these those. up? Yes. And this is as a snack food? Yes, or it's a confection. Scallions being uh, like onions. onions. Small green onion yes, kind yes. of a thing. Chocolate-covered pickled onions. Yes, they come in white chocolate. Say that eight times. <laughs> oh, never mind. <laughs> they come in white chocolate and black and, and dark chocolate and also in green chocolate. Oh. Right. I left the green chocolate. <laughs> You're oh. a little braver this year. Last time oh. you didn't try the Gorilla Balls. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Excuse me, one second. one second. I'm telling you. Now, you see a lot of people taste food on television, and they say, oh, that's great or that's bad. This stuff is really rude. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. So much for the onions. This stuff is horrible. Well, you're not Japanese. No, but do they, this can't even be moving in Japan. Oh, uh, it's supposed to be. In three flavors. <laughs> what were the other flavors? Uh, white chocolate and also, uh, the, this is dark chocolate. They also Look have that. Yeah, there's chocolate coated and there's a tiny onion yeah, in there. It's pickled. <laughs> it's a pickled onion. That's what it really... Oh, right. They also have it in the green, green chocolate. Okay. Which I, All right. that so this really... is not going to go anywhere. All right. We'll, no. do, a, we'll do a commercial and uh, we'll come back and we'll look at the rest of these fabulous uh, articles that are for sale now. Are they for sale now? Some of them are. Some of them are for sale. Some are just test market devices and, and we'll, we're waiting for the chicken stuff to heat up. It's going to be great. <laughs> Just let me take a second. I want you to eat one of these, just so you don't think I'm making this nonsense up. Try this. These are these uh, chocolate-covered onion balls. These are just about the worst thing I've ever had in my mouth. There's four of them. I bet you can't get through a half of one. Just try it. Oh, no, no, don't pass them out. 
There'd be a riot in the audience. Just Now, just try it. And just watch this woman's face when she eats that. Go ahead. Give it a shot, ma'am. Come on, eat. Come on, eat. Yeah. Give her a napkin. Isn't that horrible? Is it? You hate it, don't you? Well, not too bad, I guess. Okay, well... <laughs> <laughs> All right, now let's move on, Bob, because we've okay. got a, a lot well, of stuff to do. Well, we have a to... lot of stuff to do. This is a new product in England, which is going very, very well. It is baked beans and spaghetti. It's beanetti. Beanetti. Now, it seems hard Pour for us to here. believe. Yes. Pour it in there. Yeah, if you want to eat that one, you're welcome to it also. Well, that, that doesn't that, appeal to me either. Well, it actually doesn't look too bad. No. To think of it. Well, I'll tell you what we do. <laughs> there, now, oh, there's good the, Now, there's yes, the one. Sure. Yes. Now, this can't be that bad. You skip them. It's not that oh, yeah. bad, actually. It's, uh, I've eaten meals like that when I was okay. a kid. Down okay. on my luck, I'd have some. Right. Yeah. Now, <laughs> Dave, this is one of the hottest products to hit the market in many years. This is Jolt. It is a uh, Jolt cola. cola. It is I've all the this. sugar and twice the caffeine of the normal soft drinks. <laughs> And uh, yeah, let's, get, let's this, get this boy open. Yeah, this is a product. Let's don't waste that's any called, time here. This, <laughs> excuse me a second. I think you may like this one. This is being bootlegged already. I had a friend over from uh, Washington, D.C. She works for the Smithsonian Institute over the weekend. She's taking a couple of cases down. Pass this out. <laughs> This is Jolt Cola. Now, you, you're not going to be able to go to sleep tonight, you realize. Per apparently, students are taking this stuff and studying with it because it keeps them awake at night and, uh, you know, really gives them that jolt. Mm. This was six years in the making, apparently. And yeah, it's I a, thought of this about six years ago. Who's it bottled by? Is it a major... Uh... No, it's uh, bottled by a small company up in Rochester. It's on test up in Rochester, New York, uh, called Jolt Cola. We, we have no federal uh, uh, guidelines to control this sort of thing, or is that all no, right? No, this is still, this is within the federal guidelines. It has about a little under 60 milligrams of caffeine. <laughs> Let's do two shows. What the hell? <laughs> we gotta, we gotta Let's go. go. Any more guests back there? Okay, we're just about so done, aren't we? Can, oh, no. so we're going to try, try out a couple more things. Try out a couple more things, quickly. Okay, quick, quick, quick. This is a, uh, um, another Japanese product. It's a pendulum. You know, you squirt that way, and it... Don't watch it. Don't get it in your eye. And just, just exactly what do you do with this? This is a, a room fragrancer. Oh, thank God. It makes the place smell nice. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well... <laughs> Yes, that ought to be very good well, we after the bean eddy. Uh, Bob, we got to yeah. go, and the chicken, uh, the chicken, and, never, and the chicken never warmed no, no, no. up. Okay. Nice to meet you. Nice as to soon as you again. figure out what you do, come back and tell us. Yes, that's All right. well. Thanks. Bob McNabb, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be right back. a top gun with the sting of a cobra and the right stuff to boot. He's a fashion hawk with a thick mane of golden hair like rippling wheat that drives the women wild. He's a complex and tragic man, a poet and a dragster, Hamlet with a gun. We need him like a hole in the head. The new regulator guy. Thursday on NBC. Then, there was a promotional spot for a new show starring Chris Elliott called, get this, The Regulator Guy. Have you ever heard anything so stupid? What a clown. Hi, Paul. How you doing? Oh, hi, Chris. How are you? Okay. Good. You know... I thought the regulator guy thing tonight was the best I've ever seen. You know, it's my favorite piece. Well, thank you very much, Paul. I know you mean that, too, so yeah. thanks. Hey, what are you doing here? Oh, that's just, uh, just a letter. Uh, yeah? Well, my, let me just see. To my parents. Then there was a promotional clip. What the hell is that? Oh, no! Oh! Oh! oh. Ah! Oh, Chris, are you all oh. oh, right? Oh! Yeah! Ouch! That's okay. Jeez, I guess my hand slipped. Oh, I'm that's sorry. all right. What, what is this, Paul? Gee, I... Ah. I think, ah. it's, I think it's acid. Oh, yeah. no! Well, ah! <laughs> 
I guess I better get to the nurse then. Yeah. Oh, geez, yeah. that stings. Jeez, I, I hope you're all right. Yeah, I'll be fine. You go ahead, finish yeah. that letter. Okay. Ow! Okay. Oh, my. Oh. Anyway, because another much funnier piece was too expensive to produce, Dave next did a top ten list. Okay, let me tell you who's going to be on the show in uh, just a couple of minutes. You're going to meet Hector Macho Camacho. We're going to fill him full of Jolt Cola. <laughs> uh, and the, also, uh, Judy uh, Tenuta will be out, a very funny woman. And uh, tomorrow on the program, we'll have uh, actress Ann Wedgworth. She'll be here. And uh, she played Patsy Cline's mother in uh, S Sweet Dreams. And also Jay Leno. That'll be tomorrow night. And now, uh, boys and girls, as always, compiled at the home office in uh, Milwaukee, we have another top ten list for you. And tonight's category is uh, Muammar Gaddafi's top ten pet peeves. <laughs> Things that really get this man's goat. Muammar Gaddafi's top ten pet peeves. Here we go. Number ten, harassment from the American fleet. Number nine, rival factions threaten coup. Number eight, Zionist propaganda. Number seven, people who talk during public floggings. <laughs> Number six, those moochers from the Sudan. Number five, restaurant washrooms that are, are always out of paper towels. Number four, Broadway revivals nominated for Tony Awards. Number three, saran wrap not clingy enough. Number two, know-it-all Syrians. And the number one top ten pet peeve for Muammar Gaddafi, so-called unbreakable combs. Okay, uh, you're going to meet uh, Hector Macho Camacho in just a minute. Uh, we're going to do a commercial. Come on back. It'll be plenty of fun. Don't worry about nothing. Mom and Dad, you wouldn't believe what happened next. Dave was introducing boxer Hector Camacho when an NBC page standing near the desk dropped her pencil. It wasn't a big deal, but Dave flew into a rage. He started shaking her violently and screaming like a crazy man until she was led away in tears. Of course, the whole scene was edited out so the home viewers won't see it. When they turned the cameras back on, Dave acted as if nothing had happened. Hi. <laughs> Welcome back to the show, and I hope you're having as much fun at home as we are here in the studio tonight. Uh, here now, take a look at uh, some videotape of my next guest in the ring. This is uh, Mr. Camacho. There he is in his uh, sequined flag of Puerto Rico. And here he is with an opponent. Ooh, lights out. Adios. Oh, my. Good heavens. He is often referred to as one of the most colorful, charismatic, and controversial fighters in the world. And on June 13th, uh, excuse me, he will be defending his title against Edwin Rosario at Madison Square Garden. Please welcome the WBC lightweight champion of the world, Hector Macho Camacho. Hi, Hector. Good to see you. Come on over here. Good to see you, Hector. How you doing? Okay. Uh, you have a, this is a, obviously a, 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 a post, poster for the fight. No, what you carried out here. Okay, yes, this is something that Don told me to carry, so I did him the favor. Don King told you to carry that out? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, and is this a big fight for you coming up? Uh, well, yeah, all my fights are big. Mainly this one, because it's his former champion that I'm fighting, mm -hmm. and he's going to come out to try to take my act away. Mm -hmm. Do you guys get along at all? Do you not like each other? Oh, uh, we could get along. Is that most of the time I'm the tr man attraction of everywhere I go, I stay the show. They don't like that. Uh -huh. So he's uh, he's a little envious of you. Huh? Well, maybe not envious, but he just wanna, he wants my life. Uh -huh. uh, and we saw you there in the ring, and you had a, a robe on. It was before a fight, and you were kind of jumping around and stuff. Does that bother the opponent? Does that make them Most mad? of the time, it, it intimidates them. Mm -hmm. Mainly, I do the job before the fight, like Ali, and you said, you're going on four. Mm -hmm. but I don't do it that way. I just come and I pray in front of them. It's all the psychological then. Yes. It gives you an advantage. Yeah. Now, how would you describe this little number you're wearing tonight? <laughs> well, 
this here is Kind of like an Eisenhower jacket, but with sequins and... Uh... <laughs> no, more like a micro, you know. Uh -huh, yeah, and you have, you have a little, uh, a lovely... Uh... Uh, macho plate. Uh -huh. uh... Now, is that, is that solid gold? Solid gold, yes. Uh -huh. And when do you put that back on the car? <laughs> well, I got my shirt. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, now you, you're you're a flashy. Uh, how old are you? You're just a kid, aren't you? Yes, a baby. How old? <laughs> Twenty-four. I just made twenty-four yesterday. Twenty-four years old, and uh, you're making a lot of money. Trying to make. But you're really in the fast lane. You spend a lot of money on on cars, don't you? Well, I like cars. Yes. Yeah, what kind of cars do you have? Well, I got a Lamborghini. I got a Ferrari. I got mm -hmm. a Corvette. No. So you Jeep. have you have about two hundred thousand dollars in cars, right there. But I get them free, though. Oh. You get them free? You see, well, wait a minute, folks. Get ready to take this information down. You're going to get a free car out of this. You see, when you, when you do little favors like this to Don, Don returns it, you know? Don gives you... Don King gives you cars? I'm like a little baby. You got to give me a lollipop. Yeah. Uh, the Lamborghini. Now, have you ever... Uh, is that the new one? What do they call that? Oh, uh, it's a Lamborghini. <laughs> <laughs> what, what is the model? Is it the Countach? Is yeah, that Countach, yeah. And how fast does this thing go? About 350. <laughs> At least that's what it says in the, in the speed tomorrow. It doesn't go 350 huh? miles an hour. I'll try it? to push it that yeah. far. <laughs> uh, and you had some experience with the cars when you were a kid, too, didn't you? Yeah, it was part of growing up. Yeah, what, what part of growing up was that? Having fun. Yeah, but you were doing what? Huh? Just trying to have fun with the fellas. But, and you were... Trying to be a clown. And you were stealing cars, weren't huh? you? Huh? No, kind of like barring it, you know? Uh -huh. <laughs> and, uh, 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 when you borrowed the car, what would you do with it? I'll try to put gas on it. If not, I'll just leave it where it's at. Mm -hmm. At least I need to keep it clean. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, uh, but you, you would take the car and drive it for what, an afternoon, overnight? i try to keep it for as long as I would, uh -huh. you know? But, unfortunately, I couldn't keep it, you know. But, you know, it came into a time, God was good to me. And, uh, you know, I could get a Lamborghini, I could get a Ferrari. Yeah, but now the, uh, other, part, the other part of the story is, uh, because you were borrowing cars so frequently, you, you had to go away, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I didn't want to. No, of course you didn't want to. They just said, uh, until you get your own car, why don't you come with us? <laughs> Yes, something You're like that. You're done borrowing cars. <laughs> yeah, I'm through with it. Now, how, how long were you in uh, in prison? Not long. <laughs> but how long? Uh, for about three months. Three months. And that straightened you out? Yes, it sure did. It doesn't, it doesn't strain up a lot of fighters or a lot of people, but it sure turned me Yeah, out. yeah. And, and what is your goal? Uh, you're, you've been the challenge, you've been the champion. Well, I've been, uh, I've been in the fast lane, like you call it. Yeah. You know? <laughs> for the past four years in boxing. Uh -huh. uh, I'm undefeated, 29 and 0, 6 and KOs two-time world champion and looking for two more yeah oh you remember your first fight yes i do did you start fighting before you went to prison or after <laughs> no i was a three-time golden glove champion when i got locked up mm -hmm. and uh, did you fight in prison do they yes i sure fought in prison a whole lot of times uh -huh. i imagine i imagine <laughs> big so. guys uh, it wasn't a way in either uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> not a, no probably not a, not exactly a way in no um uh, well, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really happy for you that you got your life straightened out. I mean, uh, you're still a kid, and you got your entire future ahead of you. Well, it always been straight. It's just it's complicated. You know, when people see me like this, you know, yeah. all of a sudden they go criticize, but they don't put their hands up like this, you yeah, know? Yeah, no. It's no. always criticism, you no, know? You, you won't get that here. <laughs> well, I know. Yeah, okay. <laughs> nice people. Now, this, uh, let's see. Let's make sure we got the information correct. On June 13th, Madison Square Garden, Edwin Rosario, and you said four rounds he's going out? Well, he says four rounds. I'm going out. Oh, okay. And then he says six rounds down going out. Yeah. He don't know. He can't make up his mind, but I'll make it up for him. Okay. Well, good luck to you. Let's come back and see us. Nice to meet you. We're going to do a commercial. We'll be right back. Let's get down there. out of time. Judy, nice meeting you. Thank you very much for being here. Oh. Excuse me one second. I want to say goodbye to somebody. Gene Martin, who is retiring from NBC today, is one of our camera operators. He's been here for 36 years. Gene, we're going to miss you. Thank you very much. Congratulations. You got out alive, buddy. Thank you, Gene. Take care. We'll see you tomorrow night, folks. Good night. Then, Dave said goodnight, and they ran the credits. I wonder who Dave Tebbett is. Just writing this letter reminds me how much I miss home. Mom's muskrat pie, 
Dad's mighty laugh like a mountain river. I wish I could come see you, but that's impossible as long as this Nielsen survey goes on. Damn this ratings war and the misery it causes.